Hi, you guys. Teacher nice Cook job. here with Acrylic Painting Monday. Is my mic on, John? Uh, sure. Let's let's say it is. You don't think it is? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> he thinks it is. I think he's bouncing up and down. You know what? It's John's birthday today, so we're going to wish him a happy birthday. For we're going to be doing a, a wonderful acrylic painting today. Of course, they're all wonderful, but today yeah, will be tractors. Super, super wonderful. We're going to paint a girl in a canoe. Oh, you told me a tractor. You I said know, we well, do it's, it's, we tricked it's, him. <laughs> You we lie. should have done a trick tractor for his birthday, but I'm so sorry. We're doing a girl in a canoe because that's what I was inspired to paint. I hope you will be too. We're going to go over some basic landscaping rules today with acrylic painting, which is a little different than if you were painting in oil or watercolor. It's totally different. And so we're going to talk about those rules and ones that you should really write down and have somewhere. Just take a moment to do that. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, landscape, uh, we've got some beautiful landscape uh, tutorials, basic ones on our website. There's one, the desert one, I really like that really goes into everything you need to know. And I wish more people would look at that one, even if you didn't paint it, because there are definite rules to painting a landscape. And um, if when you break them, your landscape looks funny. How's that? Okay, so everything else being said, we want to, again, uh, thank our mods for coming tonight. Who's out here, John? Our mods are. Yes, good. And what mods would those be, baby? The ones that are here. Uh -huh. I got to bring them up. Oh, we have moderator Judy. Liz Hi, Judy. One, Liz two, Lynn. Oh, the Quebec office. And the Mona, the sweetest. So oh, we have the international man. representation today. Wow. So yeah, thanks very much. You know, very nice. And, um, thank, and, you, thank, and thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody. And thanks, Liz, for the nice birthday card you posted on Facebook. And everybody made a some been making comments. And um, that's lovely. Um, so I'm going to just have John move the camera down to our table. Yeah, I don't want to. It's my birthday. I don't want to do it. No. This is basically the, um, this is my uh, kind of reference photo that I'm going to, I'm using. Kind of. And um, I'm you going to change it quite a bit. It. But we're going to try to simplify it. Sometimes when you have a photo, you know, it's like, did I ever teach you when you were learning division? They, you know, like, you know, what is that, 364 into... Uh, six million seven hundred eighty nine thousand and that you know when you kid you look at that and go oh no I'm just gonna go home and cry that sounds terrible and they showed you how to break down the numbers and division so that you could actually divide those numbers right well a, a painting's a little bit like that you've got to ask yourself what can I leave out um, and and not uh, ruin it you know what, what can I edit out you're gonna be your own editor kind of like an author and also, you've got to, you know, how can I simplify it? How can I do it in simple, understandable ways so I'm not overwhelmed? Because sometimes people look at a picture like this, and a lot of comments we've gotten back from people is, well, I'd paint with Ginger, but her stuff looks too hard. It really isn't, but it does require a little practice. That's all. Practice. Okay. So um, we have a little 8 by 10 canvas. Um, here's our color chart. And we've been using that this, uh, the, but for the last six months, I think, because one of the requests we got was, can you use the same colors all the time? These are heavy body acrylic paints, even though I love the Salvador paints. People asked us to return to these, so we have. Um, and we've got burnt sienna, burnt umber, thalo blue, ultramarine blue, cad red medium, magenta, cad yellow light, cad yellow medium, or cadmium orange, yellow oxide, and white. Those are our colors, okay? Now, um did you, okay so let me get out my cart my my list here okay so landscape rules R rule number one is you paint the farthest thing away first that that's just kind of how you have to do it farthest thing away first and you paint from dark to light okay unless you're doing sunsets which is different Normally, when you're doing a sunset, you'd start with yellow and then add the other colors. But, uh, you know, and then the, the other thing, rule number three is the farthest things away um, are tend to be grayer. Like, for instance, if you look at hills when you're painting a landscape, the hills tend to be, have to, tend to be grayer and more faded. The color, less, less uh, contrast, faded, everything goes in the distance. So study a few photographs, you'll see what I mean, particularly when you'll see, say, maybe a mountain of three or four mountains and one behind another, and the farthest one, you can barely see it's all gray. But when you're doing a sunset, that's different. Usually, when you're doing a sunset, the hills are, the, you know, the background, the hills, the trees or whatever, are almost black. 
If they're not black, they're pretty close. They're dark. That's when they're the darkest, okay? And we'll go over a couple of others, but uh, that's the ones I want to cover now. So um, as you can see, I've got, uh, we'll have the traceables up for this uh, tomorrow. But as you can see, I've got um, uh, my girl painted uh, just outlined here pretty, pretty easy. And I'm going to go ahead and just take some burnt umber and just paint her hair in. And I don't have any water on the brush. I just have, I'm just going to get that first coat of paint on. Uh, one of the things that's very um, easy to do is painting people from behind. And, and, and surprisingly, you'd think that they would be um, kind of anonymous, you know, like you wouldn't know who it was. But actually, that's, that's kind of not true because People are distinct from behind. When they're walking, they have a walk, a way they hold their body, a gait. You can amazing the number of people you can recognize even from the back. And so if you're thinking about taking some vacation photos and you want to take a picture, say, of, um, you know, kid, um, you know, at the beach, try to take them from behind, um, doing something sort of interesting. So it would be much easier for you to paint. You can really simplify it if you paint people from behind. So that's like the first rule, right? The other thing I like to ask myself, once I'm in this dark brown, where else can I use this color? And I know that, for instance, um, on my canoe, I, I know that I want this to be darker under here. So if I take ultramarine or thalo even blue and uh, dark brown, I'm going to, I know that I'll just put these um, little areas in here that are, it's going to be pretty dark. And, uh, and, uh, uh, just uh, just kind of outline the, um, the 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 ribs of the canoe here like that with the dark paint. It's not because this has to dry and I can be doing other stuff. But in the meantime, this works pretty well. Okay, so that's um, that's what I've got going there. So that's why I did that uh, because I know that I want that darker and I kind of want this area darker. So you're going okay, right? Okay, so. Here's the thing. If you've got dark brown on your brush and you go to paint the sky, chances are you're not going to get it clean enough to have a clean sky. So you got to watch that. If, you, if you're not, don't have a few brushes, if you're only down to two or three, um, and you, there's one brush for one thing, one brush for another, then you've got to make sure that your brush is clean. I'm just going to switch brushes. Um, so I'm going to switch brushes, and I want to take white and cadmium uh, orange. And I want to come up here like this and maybe a touch of the, the cad yellow light. There you go. And I want to um, I want to paint this uh, sunset in. I've, oh, I've got an orange um, underpainting because uh, I, I would I could have done yellow also, but I wanted this nice uh, uh, I wanted the, the red to kind of glow through here a little bit. So if I didn't cover anything, you know, maybe I missed a little bit that that underpainting of this orange would show through this. I think, I think this is like cad red, right, John? It is carmine and a yellow gesso that we got from Holbein. Yeah. Okay. So that's, a, you know, so I, I want a little bit more of the, um, want a little bit lighter up top. So I have, see all that paint on the brush? I I'm do. Just, I'm going to wipe that most of that off, just roll that off the brush and just kind of work that in. I don't want, still don't want that much, but we're just almost that much up, up here at the top like that. And then I want a little tiny bit of burnt uh, umber. Could have used raw, would have been good too. Add a little tiny bit of that, so I kind of gray that color so it's not, not too bright, but up there like that, up at the top. Kind of give it some streaks like that. That's the one thing about a sunset, you can kind of count on it being streaky. And here's a little of the cad cadmium orange. Cadmium orange is a color I've started to use this year. I love it. It's it's, it's just such a nice, easy color to use, and um, uh, and it's and it's brighter than anything I can mix. So if I want something bright for a sunset, that would be it. Okay. Now see, I've got this nice streak going across there, and that's fairly fast. Yeah. Any questions, Sean? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. So. I'm going to take some of the cad yellow light now, just on the edge now. See, I've just got it on one side, and I've kind of globbed that. I've told it up like that, and if I bend it, I can deposit a little of that, just kind of drag it. Have you tried that? This is good for oceans, too, like that. Just a few little of these orange 
Yeah, little streaks there, like that. Done, done. Ooh, ooh, come back. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, moving on. Uh, what do we, you know? Ask yourself the question: What do I know for sure? That's how I do a lot of when I'm trying to do puzzles too. I was back. Uh, Sudoku is a good one that you know. If you've, any of you have ever played Sudoku, you really have to ask yourself: What do I know for sure? And that's a thing you can ask yourself when you're painting something. Well, I know for sure that um, I've got some water in here and it's going to be lighter. So normally I would paint, um, well, let's let's just do the dark green color. So I'm going to start with ultramarine blue and yellow oxide. Okay. Mostly ultramarine blue. It's going to be like 90% ultramarine blue, maybe. And a little tiny bit of yellow oxide. And that's my dark green color. And a tiny bit of cad red, like 1%. And I want to come up here like this and say, just using the angle brush here, I want to say that there's my pine trees and my dark trees. It's not quite black, but it's pretty close to, to it could be black, but it's a very, very dark green. Yes and yes. And then we're going to come over here like this and um, just suggest that there's the bank back here. And I'm not going to get too detailed. We're talking about how to do something like this really pretty elegant but but keeping it simple and you're going oh god that seemed too hard ginger not really did it okay hey we now, have a new a new viewer and i like to know what is the purpose of the undercolor well if the thing of the word that's a good question acrylics are an interesting medium because unlike oil and watercolor and stuff they have a tendency to lock onto each other like this. Even if you had two totally dry paintings for four years and you set them up against each other face to face, eventually <laughs> they'd do that. They'd be glued. Then the molecules go. <sighs> they love each so other. So the gesso, all the gesso does is keep the fabric from bleeding through. That gesso isn't, so if you do a thin coat of color, what we call an underpainting, thin coat of color, what happens and let that dry. Then in your next layer is so much easier to paint on because it's going it's going to want to do this. So it's it eases painting and also um, if you're just painting on a pier, what's, what if you just painted it white instead? Well, a little bit of that white's going to show through and it's not going to be as effective as if you have a color underneath. Good question. Good answer, right? Yeah. Because when right. she's done, if we take a close look at the canvas, go zooming all around, you'll find areas that she did not actually cover. Yeah, and the red will show through. So you want to you want to you want a color that's going to be under there that will look good with your final your final masterpiece. All right, so I'm going to put a little of this um, shadow color in here because I've already got it mixed, right? And um, I, I think I'll put a little of this close to the boat here too, like that. Uh, maybe just down in here because I mean I've got it mixed, right? Got it. Might as well use it. And I don't have to then, you know, I'll just use it up, right? I'm using a Stay Wet palette, too, by the way. All right? So, so oh, we got kind of an interesting painting already. We haven't done much, right? Kind of neat, right? Hey, it's Bev's birthday today as well. Happy birthday, Bev. Oh, happy birthday, Bev. That's lovely. I'm going to take some white paint now and into that light green color and add a tiny bit of yellow oxide to it. A little bit more. A little tiny bit of the blue. Okay, maybe some cad yellow medium. Let's try that. There we go. Uh, try some thalo blue. I want it a little bit grayer. All right, tiny bit of magenta. It's just, it sounds like a witch's formula, doesn't it? All it these really little does. colors. I got too much magenta, so I added a little more yellow. Kind of overdid it on the magenta. A little more thalo. That should be about right. Okay, so let's take a little bit more white now. Mix that in. There we go. Gray. Kind of a gray-blue color. Now I'm going to come up here just next to, like next to her. And I'm going to suggest that, the, you know, there's some lighter sides to this that are coming through. Right next to her hair. We'll just, we'll just do a little of this lighter color. Just a couple of places. The sun's gone down, but hasn't gone down that much. Okay. And as long as I have that, that that color, I think I'll do a little 
kind of some little lily pad things here going like that. There we go. Just kind of do something sideways like this. And we'll go over those in a little bit again. So I'm putting all that stuff in um, just in the order of how I'm painting it. And because we're doing something kind of unique is that we're not drying. Normally I would dry all the time. And so that would change how I painted painting this. But basically I'm still coming from back to front and um, I still want the, um, the dark green colors. And um, for instance, like here, I might put another color in front of these. Do you see what I'm doing here? Like that. See how I push those back a little bit? There. So I've got the lighter colors in the back, and then you've got the darker colors coming forward. All right. So now I want some light blue color for her, for the uh, water. So I'm going to take some uh, Thala blue, like 1%, and mostly white, and a little bit of burn umber. And I want kind of a grayed color. So if I add a tiny bit, like less than 1% magenta, this will gray. I'm going to come up here like this. And I had quite a bit of brown on the brush. So let me rinse it, start again. And uh, let's start again with this mixture. Come back up here like this. And just give it a little bit of a... Come up here next to our girl. And um, I want to kind of come a little bit lighter next to her like that. And just say that this is our... Um, end of our water here. Now I could have put the dark green on top of the water too. Could have done it that way. And still go back and do that. I'm just going to kind of skip a place for the um, um, for the paddle, canoe paddle. I'm just going to kind of go around the canoe paddle there like that. And just put the water in. So are there any questions, John, why I'm finishing painting in the water? Uh, that's a big negative, boss. All questions have been answered. Well, you know, I, I want to thank everybody, too, for, who participated in our auction. The piece of uh, thank you very out. much. John's uh, already shipped out uh, two, uh, two loads of paintings. And, uh, again, we want to thank you very much for those. Of, and those of you who did not, were not able to participate, um, in the auction, or maybe you just didn't win your bid. That you maybe you participated and it just didn't win the bid, right? Yeah. That happens. Remember, I will show you. Remind me when I'm that, that I will show you the. Uh, we want uh, every three months we do a, a drawing, a uh, uh, special drawing for people that have um, been uh, been uh, contributing to our scholarship fund, and we've picked. Uh, we picked like um, I think four paintings, and we picked three winners, and they have their choice of the paintings. That you know, the first person gets their name, get they get to have first choice and so forth. But even though the third person still gets their choice of two particular paintings, so it's possible to win an original ginger cook. Um, I think I'd say it's really possible. Yeah, I'm gonna come in here like that with the. A little bit more blue in the water here. Come over our lily pads like this. Break that up. Okay. So she's we got a lake, you guys. That's <laughs> just kind of cool, right? We got a lake. Come on, that's kind of cool, right? Um, that bluish gray that you're doing. Uh huh. What what is that color that you did? It's phthalo blue, white, and magenta. Phthalo blue, white, and magenta. Uh huh. Well, speaking of donations, we'd like to thank Sharon for her donation that came in through the PayPal system. Thank you, Miss Sharon. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, you very much. appreciate it. Thank you. We yeah. do have some exciting news for our final auction. Well, the first auction, well, our, our calendar is kind of weird for the auctions. I go from December is our beginning of our next year for the auctions. And we have some exciting plans for that one. Yeah. It's going to make it more appealing to more people. Well, I'd like to thank Sally, who also made a donation through the PayPal system. 
Thank you, Ms. Sally. Thank you very much. Sometimes you've got to do a couple coats on this. See how I'm going over this? Oh, you can still see the red through it. You know, if you don't want to see the it, red it, through it, you've got to build it, up Yeah, on well, it. I had to take a little bit of that off. Okay, so now I'm going to take a little bit of this orange color and just put it right here on the water. Look at that, see? Maybe a little of this water is reflecting that. Look at that, see? Just like that, that cadmium orange. Pretty, right? Definitely gorgeous. Uh, you're good. Well, same thing. We're, we're, it's coming along. Now let's give us, a, let's take the dark brown and do a second coat of dark brown hair. Because now that we, let's give her a second coat of, of the dark brown hair like that. So that can be drying. Okay. Now, someone's going to say, but I want to paint somebody blonde. My granddaughter's blonde. Well, guess what? No sunset then. Make a blue sky. <laughs> <laughs> We tried to do that. We tried to change the color in one of our paintings, and boy, it did not work. You just, if you're going to do a blonde, then you got to probably don't want the sunset or have the trees up high, you know, have her around trees. You know what I mean? Not not up toward the sky like that. Yes and yes? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of this cadmium orange, and I'm going to come right here on the top of my boat. And I'm going to put the what, are the, what do they call these? This is a, these are gunnels or? Um, gunnels sounds good. I think these are gunnels. Somebody knows that the boating people, it's been a while since I boated. My Bo parents spent a lot of money. Boating people know this stuff. My, let me, send a lot, spent a lot of money sending me to summer camp. You should um, know all about it then. I know. I'm just saying. I know. I should. And, um. I know that I want, I guess I got to have this up higher here, too. Hey, Ginger, do you have any paintings in the museum? I think you should. Oh, thank That's you. That's from Angie. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That's a nice thing. Appreciate that. I'm going to put a little more of this green back here in our water here as long as we're doing it. There we go. There it goes. See, you can always go back and add, right? You can always add. All right, so let's change brushes and let that dry. Let's paint our girl on. Now, this was kind of an odd outfit she was wearing, but I thought it was pretty. It was sort of a, you know, I think that, you know, I, so we're just, um, normally people wouldn't be wearing this, but the idea, the whole idea was to, to share it when, when I'm sharing this with you. The whole idea was that you would um, uh, find it fun to put... Um, uh, just have fun with it. Just, you, you know what I mean, to put, okay, that's too dark. Goldilocks here with the color. I want this pretty light. It's almost the color of the water. Um, you would um, find it fun to just paint this almost, it almost feels like a, you know, kind of a kimono-like thing that she's wearing. And the, the way I'm painting it, I'm just painting in some light colors. Like that, I'm just going to paint in some light and dark colors. Um, uh, What's the rule for copying or using ODGs again? Um, well, the official rule is 70 years after their death. We try to go a little 100. Depending upon what it is, sometimes we'll press. Or when it. the painting's done too. No, it has to go by death. Death of the artist. Okay. Not the painting. Well, yeah. Anyway, it, it but changed. I mean, it's you know, if you're doing it, anywhere between seventy-five and a hundred, you're safe to go. Seventy is the minimum. I'd rather not even give those kind of advices, John. Because yeah, we're not legal. Uh, so we're not legal, we, so I'd rather not. You, you want to? I'd say look that up on the internet. Don't don't ask us. Yeah, don't ask us. We don't. You, know, anything. you know, don't don't ask us. Um, just look that up. Um, we do a lot of we're we're just um, we do a lot of old EG guys and um, uh, and which is fun. See, I'm going to take a little bit of Dazzling Purple now. Put this here like that, just where the this comes over her shoulder like that. And uh, there you go. And you're going, ooh, neat, right? That's kind of fun. Like we're trying to keep this as you know simple as possible. So if I take ultramarine blue and purple now, um, where could I put that? Uh, 
I'm going to come out here like this and put her um, knee in on her. She's got a knee here. I'm going to put that in. And I want something a little darker than that. So I, could, I don't want to use black. But if I mix all these dark colors together, I can get some pretty nice dark colors. So again, I'm just going to come in here and do just some dark lights and darks on her cl clothes and all this stuff. And uh, just keep changing the greens. All right. So keeping it simple. Okay, not, not talking too much about it. Here's a little cad red. Uh, going to come up here and a little magenta. Put that on this little piece of uh, stuff that she's got. Her little bag here, maybe here on the that. It's the biggest place for the red. And already it kind of looks neat, doesn't it? I mean, we haven't done much, but it kind of looks, I think it looks kind of neat, right? So what else could we do? Well, we could take some cad red and red and cadmium orange, right? And come down here like this and um, paint the, um, uh, the, the ribs of the boat. And the same thing on this side, we'll put those in. Just the cadmium light and the cadmium red medium. those in do it and you've got it almost needs a few coats to get this to cover too don't want to get too technical but here we go that's just like that great color yeah great color isn't it for the boat yeah then i'm going to take a little bit of this yellow put it on top of here like that just keep that pretty simple And maybe a little bit of this yellow right here, too. Let's put a little yellow on that boat right there. And a little bit of orange going right up to the... There, okay. Woo, fun! We'd like to thank Joe Lynn for the donation that came in through the Super Chat. Thank you. There's a little guy giving a thumbs up. So I guess that, that everybody wants to ask, but nobody's asking. So I guess we'll let them ask, right, John? The, the 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 word is out on 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 my daughter cinnamon moving to Ireland I guess what when uh, who said that um yeah that's true I've known about it for a while but um, you know they were still finalizing plans and that looks like they're going to be moving to Ireland but we'll still be doing the workshop next summer so they'll be back for that and of course cinnamon and I will be doing the workshop together. Okay, and uh, so if you're if you're if you were thinking about wanting to you know get a chance to hang out with her, they want to do a bunch of workshops in Europe. They're they're friends with them, um, uh, some people that have some pretty neat estates over there, and um, so their their plan is to um, to do the workshops, a bunch of workshops in Europe too, and particularly around the uh, Ireland area and stuff like that. Um, that's what they want to be able to do. And um, but they are going to the, the Poconos, the one we did last summer, and we're going to do again this year. That is such a neat place to to have a workshop. That is just so great. Um, we just love that. Uh, didn't we have a good time, John? Oh, we had a great time. And you can kind of see how I'm just again. I haven't dried anything. I'm just going to do this little bit here on the. To just the angle brushes are so great you can do so much with them Arizona would like to know so ginger do you worry about the thick paint brush strokes no that's part of the painting yeah if you, if you go to spend some time in a museum and, and look at the the brush look strokes. at the ODGs. yeah spend some time there and and if you want to not do that there's more of an illustration type paintings 
illustrative work. Let me give her some longer hair. See, kind of neat, right? And already it's sort of taking shape, isn't it? We haven't done much. It's coming together nicely. Yeah, now, you know, John and I really thought hard. We, we worked on this together. We really worked on this together as far as what kind of sky maybe we would put up here in the um, in, in this painting. Um, uh, how, how we would want that to be. And uh, that kind of thing. I mean, how how, how would we want the the sky to, to be handled um, if we had you know when we talk about you know having a sky like this? And uh, we th th we thought the sunset just made the picture to, to us anyway. I don't know if you guys think it does, but for us it it made it it kind of made it. Let's just do that on that side for the boat. Um, we think it's kind of kind of a neat thing. So I'm going to let that dry for a second. I want to thank everybody that's been doing these great donations, and um, thank you very much. Now, what happens is every three months, for every hundred dollars that's donated in that three month in that quarter period, um, you have one entry into a drawing. You get um, we have like a goldfish bowl here. With, with the tickets in it, and you have a, to get new all new tickets, and you go in here and we draw out um, a name, and um, so you know for if, so for every if you were to say what do a hundred dollars in one month, it'd be you'd have one ticket. If you did uh, several, you'd have two or three tickets. But uh, so far, it's been pretty good. I think we've, we here are the, some of the paintings that were looking to find, um, uh, you know, lovely homes for these little eight by tens, aren't they, isn't this cute? This is the, this was a, that's an actual um, a YouTube a flower market. It's one of our YouTube ones. I think, I think it's adorable. These little frames we got at Jerry's, there's that one. One of my, um, let's see if I can, uh, and here's one too. I really love this one. Uh, look at that with that, that was a, a, one of our winter paintings on YouTube. You see how nice like these are one. great little paintings framed. They look good in and, that frame. and then they do, don't they? And then you've got this is one of my favorites. Um, and you've got these these black eyed Susans and see how pretty that looks with the frame. Or you could do a gold frame would be very pretty. And then we have the other lilacs. Which are, are are very nice too. No, I don't like that frame. Change well, frame. Well, we I think that one needs like a dark frame or maybe oh, the light blue is kind of pretty. That's not bad. I'd probably do gold with that too. Yeah. But um, the trick when you're thinking about how how do I pick a frame? If you can pick, um, if you're doing something with a mat, you want a little bit of color from the picture, and if you're doing a, a frame, you want to pick up a little of the color of the painting. So that's one of the things that you know. There's some painting rules you know, framing rules, and that's a whole nother subject, okay? So again, those are the, uh, those are our, um, uh, those what will be given away. Mm. And speaking of giving away, uh, we've got a contest going on tonight for mm -hmm. downloadable lessons. And because this one was, um, uh, you know, I thought in t it would be fun to do a downloadable. This is a w from our Wave and Water Masterclass, Canoeing with Dad, and you, um, this is a downloadable lesson, and this is a perfect one to change either a blonde or brunette, you make somebody with long braids or short hair. You can change the gender of the child pretty neatly. Dad could have gray hair, it would still work. So this is a really nice step-by-step -step downloadable lesson. We'll be doing a drawing for two of these tonight. Cool. Cool, right? And another good one on how to do reflections of the water and so forth, okay? So if you if this this is a perfect companion, we thought we would you know do that. Yes and yes, Get, getting there, yeah. All right, so this is kind of dried enough where I can take another maybe a little detail brush, and um, I want to just put a little bit of a print or something on on this. Um, I'm just gonna come along here like this and scribble a little. Give that a little print like that, and the same thing here on the yeah, yes, and yes. 
and let's take a little bit of a, a little bit of white and to see yellow oxide and do a little bit of a let's come out here with a, a little bit of a tan color here and we'll just indicate a little bit of an arm coming out here for our paddle and then I want something kind of dark like this way and uh, I want to darken Oh yeah, I'm going to darken this. All I'm doing is looking at my reference photo and just seeing where I want some darks and lights. Okay, and um, you know that's the, that's the whole trick there. And so I want to, her leg to look like it's uh, coming over. The, it's you know that's her leg. So I've got to round that up a little bit. See, like so. There you go for her outfit there. Okay, a little bit of light here. Light there, some sort of dark. It's a little purple. It's just a little pattern in here like that. And uh, so something dark right there. We don't know what's in the backpack or what's in the stuff, but it's she's got it's 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 there, right? Okay. And uh a little bit of darker red up here on the sides. You don't want to go from bright red. You want to darken the red here on the sides where it's coming down. So that's where your cadmium red comes in. One of those little tricks there. It's kind of darken the inside. So the lightest part then on the on this would be, would be in here, just a couple of places, and maybe right up up here. Yeah. So I will definitely miss cinnamon going to Ireland. But I think it's going to be a wonderful opportunity for my grandchildren to see the world and see how um, uh, experience new things, not just through television and YouTube. <laughs> just might be nice. Uh, I think that would be great. And as much uh, fun as it's been to... Um, to you know, stay inside the house and to, for two years during COVID, I think the children are more than ready to um, to go anywhere, get out, see something. Yes. So, all right. So we got there. We go. Hey, I'd like to thank Douglas for the donation that came in through PayPal. Thank you, Mr. Douglas. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. Thank you very. Thank you. Now, I, I want to put her, some highlights on her hair. And what I'll do is I'll just use burnt sienna and a little yellow oxide and wipe the brush off to put a little on. Do you know the secret? Do you load your brush twice? Put the paint this on, for, load it, and then uh, then now now brush it on. You've got just enough. And I think I want a little I more. I never understood that when I first got involved with Ginger. Why you put it on and wipe it off? Because then you have just amount. This is paint management. You have just the amount, right amount. Well, Karen did the same thing. It made no sense to me. Well, because nobody explained it, honey. No, That's they right. didn't. They, they, you know, you got to explain it. The reason you do that is so um, um, you've got um, uh, I've got to put my water back here next to my girl now. Here, so let's just go up here like this. Let's take a little bit of green. Let's put some Let's put a little bit of the dark green. Um, you know how to make a dark green, right? Just mostly blue with um, a little bit of yellow oh, or yellow oxide. wasn't from Douglas, and I thought we had another. I thought we had another male friend. It was really Lisa. Well, thank, thank you, Lisa. You, Lisa. Appreciate it. I use my husband's account. Smart. Yeah. I remember. I got to tell. Can I tell a funny story? Oh, might as well. Okay. So, You're among friends. Um. Back when I was uh, married to George for a number of years, like 22 or something, not Cinema's dad, but George. Um, George was really cheap, still is, I think. <laughs> he's really cheap, right? <laughs> he's and, frugal. No, he's cheap, man. Right. He's just he's just cheap. It just, it, you know, and it, it's probably, for, you know, not that, you know, it probably seems like I'm being judgmental. Gosh, I wouldn't, not me. But um, let's see, let's just bring some of this down a little bit lower. Here's some of our green um, reflection stuff, right? But the thing of it was is that, uh, I remember we had some rental properties in Houston when we first came, and we had a crew working, and we had this house we were fixing up, and it was kind of, in the, this was back when Home Depot, so there was like two in all of Houston. So um, 
uh, I was sent out to buy a broom, a big push broom, because he'd forgotten it, um, and had a crew waiting, and were paying them by the hour for me to come back with this broom. And um, so I found this little tiny mop, back when they were still existed, then they hadn't all gone out of business. I found this tiny little ma and pop, pop um, um, hardware store. Okay. And uh, just for the, put a little bit of color on that too. And uh, anyhow, the um, uh, they was, wasn't very big, about the size of a double white trailer. And that they did have some very nice push brooms. I mean, you know, if they were going to carry anything like that, you know it was going to be the, the best quality. There were no cheap ones like we might have found at other stores, okay? So um, anyhow, um, I, I, I went ahead. I think the broom was like... 30 bucks or something, even way back then. Was more. I knew immediately it was more than he wanted to spend for a broom, but I mean, it was another hour and a half to get to a Home Depot back then. And But you, you couldn't ever reason with him on stuff like this. He never quite got the, 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 the economics of not um, um, you know, being pound, pen, penny wise, pound foolish kind of stuff. Yeah. It's you know, you never quite got that. So um, anyhow, so I ended up with a, um, I'm going to paint the paddle in now. So I ended up paying for it. Then I said, can you give me a receipt, please, for $15? He said, what? I said, I won't take it back. Just give me a receipt for $15. Here's your money, but that's what I need to, to make my life work. So I, I got my receipt. And uh, just do a little dark purple on this side here like that. And um, didn't say anything about it and brought the, oh, he also sent somebody with me. We were also having someone, so I didn't have to go by myself. There was another guy with me that w was working for us, too. So we were paying him by the hour to stand around watching me pay, do brooms, right? Since the economics of this was just so crazy, John. So anyway, um, the um, the upshot of it was is that um, I got back and he got this is a great broom. First thing he said was, how much was it? Because he's looking at this broom and he's eyeing me very suspiciously. This is a <laughs> lot nicer broom than he would have ever bought. And I says, oh, God, I think it was, I don't know, let me look. I hope I didn't pay too much. It was like 15 bucks. Was that too much money? <laughs> Did you lie? Oh, through my teeth, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, see, I told you, my wife's the best shopper in town. He had bet everybody I'd come back with this cheap broom. So I think it was even cheap. I think we did make up for it because everybody paid up. How much uh, was it? It was like 30 bucks or something. I just totally, it was an expensive broom. You can't, we, you, you, we weren't at Home Depot, man. You can't just, can't just be getting cheap, cheap things. That, you know what I mean? It was a little mom and pop store. Right? We were supporting a local economy. We were, yeah, absolutely. We, yeah, a little local economy there like that. There's a hand on there. Yeah, absolutely. We just, um, you can't, you can't, you know, we had the broom forever, too. It was a good little broom. But that was so funny because he says, I see, I told you my wife was the best shopper around. I love it, don't you? I think it's great. That's a great story. But so, so somebody said they put it in my husband's account, yeah. And I, not that we would ever tell anybody to lie, but sometimes you just you just want to avoid an argument. You know what I mean? Just you just don't want to is have it that worth conversation. An argument? You know what? Is it worth the argument? Yeah, it's just a worth the argument. Um, I remember years ago we had a friend, and um, they had this, they were living. My daughter Cinnamon, who's you know an adult now, but when she was a little kid, we had gone to, we were in Southern California visiting friends and we had gone to somebody's um, um, house for, for lunch or something. And the little tiny track home and they, they had three kids and dad was trying to watch football and the oldest one was screaming about not finding something and, you know, all unhappy and the, you know, as only 16 year olds can be, you know, that one. And then um, the, um, uh, I don't know, the middle one was uh, clamoring about something and couldn't find the recipe for cooking. And then the littlest one, who was like five or six, was her, was behind her dad on the couch putting rollers in his hair. Seriously. And I remember looking at him and saying, how do you do that? 
how do you do that? How do you don't lie? How do you not lose your mind? And his his words of wisdom, I never forgot. It was so clever. He said, "You know what?" He says, "I um, always ask myself, does it really matter?" You know, that's that was the that to me was the most interesting thing ever. Was uh, was this? Um, see how we're bringing this kind of brightening up the colors a bit curly dry darker dear friends you guys remember that right um so th that th that to me was um so, so you know i thought never forgot that does it really matter because when it really mattered everybody just kind of did what he asked and if it didn't really matter then they didn't how's that and that's all going through life. And that's, yeah, that's, that's John, you know, in a nutshell. Does it really matter? And then I would recommend using a probably a ruler on this if you were going to do it um, rather than just freehand this in. That probably would be probably the most effective. Yes and yes. See, I just want that yellow, not white. Now you're using the detail brushes that we have. Yeah, just a little there, detail that... brushes. Those little detail brushes that we have. Put a little bit more orange on that because I don't want that quite that bright. There, just yeah, just and then here's this cadmium orange, which is a just such a great color, isn't it? And then it's got a little bit more of the dark. Bring that dark down here on the edges. Put that. Put all of this in shadow a little bit more. And you guys, I don't know, just. Uh, Come together nicely, guys. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I think, I think, I guess the point with this is that, you know, sometimes you think this has got to be, um, you know, it's got to be difficult or to, to be, you know, or to be okay. And, um, and it doesn't have to be difficult. You just have to do it systematically okay that's I want to just go back over my rules here <laughs> rules yeah so so the farthest things go away except for sunsets you see where they get darker right and then here's the thing your center of interest should have the greatest contrast what now do that again your center of interest which is of course our girl here should yeah. have the greatest contrast. Lightest light and the darkest dark. So your eye goes to that. So I did a demonstration. I, we, didn't, I, I didn't see the demonstration. I well, I'll do one in a second. Oh, maybe I can show it in a couple other paintings. Um, maybe I do. Where's the paintings? Uh, for instance, in the academy, we we missed our deadline on this. John got so busy mailing out pictures that he didn't get it. But with this uh, tomorrow for sure, the hat <laughs> will be in the. Um, in the academy and uh, sure. over there on our online. I'm thing. ready. If the this other is, person. It's just uh, we didn't get it out. We'll do, we'll get it out tomorrow, and that's a, the hat and the lilacs is a really a marvelous uh, step by step tutorial. It's acrylic painting with gingercook.com. I thought it was irises. No, they're this lavender. Oh, hi. You know how many times I've changed the name of this lesson. You start off with lilacs, then you said lavender, and now you're telling me they're... Lavender. Now they're lavender. We had irises yesterday. Oh, I lied. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, John. I lied. They're, they're lavender, okay? So that's lavender. So that's now lavender. Yes, that's lavender. That's wild lavender. So i got to change them again. Yes. This is why we haven't published it yet, folks. <laughs> that's a good thing. And then the, later on this week, because we got a little behind on that one, you know, we like to introduce you to uh, artists that paint you know, the old EGs, we call them old EGs, not to be disrespectful, old dead guys. These are the artists you can really and learn gals. from. You can, and gals. These are the people you can learn from. They were the masters of the past, the ones that are in the museums. And and um, and I think probably most of you have been following our channel for a long time. You probably know more about art history than, than you ever thought possible because there's so much of this that is... Um, um, uh, covered on our show with all these different ones, not just uh, Van Gogh and not just Cezanne, stuff like that, people. No, so we, this we, is an artist named Metcalf. Yeah, we've probably found the people unheard of. And this, these French canals are still, um, they look very similar today as they did, you know, 100 years ago. 
And I love this fisherman with his net in there and, you know, in his little boat. And I just thought this was so charming. It's on a gallery, it's on a kind of a gallery wrap canvas where you paint around the edge, you don't frame that. Um, anyway, that's, I don't think you guys know about this one. This is kind of neat. What size was this, John? 20 by 24, my queen. 16 by 20. What is it? 16 by 20. That's what I say, 16. There you go. So somebody always <laughs> wants to know what are the things. So this, I think, is probably. How many cookies is that? Do you it, know how many cookies it is? I know. I think it's four. Okay. But, I mean, if you're into boats and stuff, people in boats are fun, right? And um, uh, I think the the says, scenes yeah. help you get away. Again, um, see how this gets grayer as it goes back, right? What Where the, the the painting we're doing now, we have something very dark back there because we have a different sky. So that's, so that's a new rule. Maybe you just didn't know about that one, but, you know, happy to share these things with you. That's what's supposed to be this week. Yeah. So the, the, the Tuesday it, will it probably get that. It depends on how many times she's going to change the name of it. So now the demonstration I'm talking about, your eye goes first to the lightest light and the darkest dark. So let's put this away. Now when you, I've got a dark brown canvas. I've got some green, some brown, some tan, and some white. Kind of what? squint your eyes. Tell me where your eye goes. This is a white. Hello. Hello. So if you're painting something, doesn't matter whether it's still life or landscape or whatever it is, okay, and say your subject is a flower, and it's a big red flower. We'll use that as an example, okay? Uh, and it's got some green leaves and whatever. If you've got some, and that's your subject, that's your center of interest. If you've got a white flower behind it, you have just changed the viewer. You've changed the view because your eye immediately go, you could have some white behind it, but the lightest light and the darkest dark have to be where your center of interest is. Keep that in mind. People always say, well, I want to paint my own photographs. Well, you know, it's good to want to paint from your own photographs. And I, one of the reasons I'm showing you how to paint people from behind is because that's a very simple way to paint, you know, to get started. Your, your vacation photos are really, really simple and get started on that. But you've got to keep in mind that it's like painting's language. Uh, the other day it came out that... Um, John was noticing that there are some people that do like 10 minute paintings on YouTube and they have like thousands of viewers. And, you know, every every time they do a, a lesson, they have maybe 20,000 people watch it. OK, whatever, 100,000, whatever. God. And I said, it's kind of I said, but I think you have to understand on our channel, even my daughter's channel, we were talking about this today. I said, the thing is, is that we don't do 10 minute stuff. I mean, we could we could just change the whole format and only do 10 minute stuff. You know, we could do that. But the idea is it's the difference between, say, um, watching, say, puppies playing in a, in a backyard, you know, you know, and uh, being a veterinarian. You know, uh, we're really showing you how to be artists as opposed to just the fun of playful puppies. Make sense? Instead of just being an observer. Yeah. So we're trying to bring your mind into the process. And you don't, it's not something you learn. We repeat stuff over and over again. We have something called gingerisms, you know, wherever there's a dark, there's a light, those kinds of things. Because it, it's, you, you, you build it up with practice. You get better and better. But it's a doable, learnable language. And that's why we do it that way. So, your, you know, your subscription to our channel means a lot. When you share the videos, that means a lot. Um uh, that all that can be, you know, is extremely, you know, helpful for us, and um, and we appreciate it very much when you do that. And I also appreciate your comments at the end of the show, and you know, back on the on the pa main page. All these things, you know, are really really nice. So we we thank you for that, and we hope that at the end of all of this, that you will have. Let's see, which one was I going to do? The blue one, light blue one, John. I think. You know, it goes with that water. Doesn't that go with that water? I just said that. Well, I said it too. <laughs> oh, well, when you say it has more power. Yeah, so I, I again, and now we're talking about, I just have it in the frame. Sometimes if I put it in the frame, I can see something a little better. Um, I can see where I might want a little bit of light right here, because wherever there's like that, there's something like that, because wherever there's a now light, there's a dark. Now you really zero the eye into that area. I'm going to See put a little bit of light up here by your hair. See, and I'm going to bring your eye up here to more. So a little bit there, but I brought your eye up there, right around her shoulder and the top of her shoulder and her hair up there. 
See, that's where I'm going to bring your, your eye, right up there, just by doing that. And um, just, uh, again, keeping it simple, spectacular. This is a very nice, easy painting to do. I might just take a little bit of the light orange color and just do a couple little highlights in her hair, too. There you go, like that, just to give it a little bit more life. And um, These frames were from Jerry's Artorama. They only have frame size, well, they have 8 by 10. They don't have 9 by 12. They're handmade after you order them, I think. They take a while to get. They well, they have them. them They have them in their stores. They like, for instance, if you go, well, yeah, we, we bought, we bought these. are close to a store. Yeah, we have them. They have them in their stores. They're, they're, they're kind of neat, though, don't you think? We got that color, a green, and a, and a brighter blue. Yeah. So, so the green I, one. Do you have the green one handy? Yeah. Let's the, see what a, see what a difference a frame makes. See that green just kills it. A totally different mood. Kills it, but a gold frame. You have a gold frame. Gold I, frame would. I think a gold frame would look pretty spectacular myself. And I don't. I don't think I have one eight by ten. Uh. Well, we do, but it's all right. Next time. But you you get the idea. So then, when you're doing something like this, and I think. Let's see, what did we do? So it's just like an hour. We did this an hour. We painted this cute little painting in an hour. And it didn't take long, right? <laughs> and yet, and yet. And yet, and yet. And yet. It's gorgeous. You know, you've got. Um, They're not custom frames. They just, this is the way they advertise them. Yeah, that's true. Let's see, I think I'll just do a Posca pen on that. My, my happiness thing would have been if I could have um, um, done a, um, uh, just, I want to just get a little outline on this, this paddle here like this. Okay, we'll just... We're going to just do that. Sure, there it is with the black frame, too. That's pretty. I think the blue kind of is prettier, but the black is nice, too, right? Um, of course, I can't have. He's out of the room, so let's 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 do this, right? He's gone. He went out of the room to get a frame. What if... Oh, yeah, I thought, thought we did. I think that's the one. Get that one off of there. Bring you back. Put that baby in, all right? All right. Check this out. That's it. There you go. Okay. Nice, right? And uh, yeah, so that's I. I was gonna put a bird in, but you got back too quick. I didn't get it in there. There better not be a bird in there. I was gonna put a little bird up in there. I get my ding ding track. My birthday and no tractor. Unbelievable. And you expect to have dinner tonight? <laughs> oh, you slay me. <laughs> Oh, well, that looks good in that frame. Yeah, it does look good in that frame, right? And you could just... Um... Oh, we have to do the drawing. Good point. Oh, do the drawing, John. Why, I'm just doing a few little finishing touches on here. All right. We have, how many people we got in here? Let, uh, Who's that? Let's do the drawing. Get the for old the... spreadsheet fired up here. Oh, it's got 99. Really? That's it, huh? That's it. You guys have a good opportunity to win on this one. Oh, I guess so, huh? Random.org. These downloadable lessons. Why do you want a downloadable lesson? What's neat is you own them forever. Um, you know, you've got, um, if you don't have to have internet. To, once you download them, you don't have to have internet to watch them. So it's like if you're, you know, traveling somewhere, you can, you know, have those available, which is kind of cool, right? And um, they can be either watched online if you don't want to download, you, you are not forced to download them. Yeah, you can watch them right online, you don't have to download them. Some, some people don't realize, like if you're using an iPad or something like that, yeah, I have one of those. Do you have one of those? Yeah. Well, if you have if you're using an iPad, they have limited space. So if you've got movies and books on tape and all this stuff, sometimes your, your, your shows won't play because you're out of room, and unfortunately. Apple doesn't allow for um, adding more memory to an iPad. You've got to want more memory, buy another one, right? Pretty much how it is, isn't it? 
Yeah, life's tough. Yeah, yeah. I yep. mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that that's You're making uh, an observation. Yeah, that's just. I mean, so if you if you didn't know that, right? How many gigabytes do I need to put it on a flash drive? Uh, most downloadables. Um, I did a flash drive for a lady, and we used a 64 gig, and we got a couple of lessons on it really easily. Most of them are probably mm, maybe four or five gig. Yeah. Okay, first winner of the downloadable mentioned earlier is Joanne Sarch, knowing that. Sir Rich. Yeah, Sir Rich. Nice. I think. That's the first one. And the second one, scroll, 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 down at the other end of the sheet. Second winner. So this is what you're, this is the lesson, in case you came in late. Just back that out. That's the lesson. Oh, I can see enough of it. That's what that's what your uh, that's what the that's what you're winning is the downloadable lesson for this that you can, you know, for the guy in the uh, dad in the kayak with whoever, right? Which is kind of neat. It just downloadable. But I can't say enough about painting people from behind because you don't have to be a you don't have to be that um, prolific or proficient at painting people. To get them from behind. If you get a good shot, everybody knows who it is, too. That's the kind of the lesson from that, too. All right. That's the second kind of winner is Mary Krogan. Cro Cor Corrigan. Corrigan? Oh. Mary Corrigan. All right. Yep. Congratulations, Mary. That's so, nice. ladies, do use the contact us on acrylic painting with gingercook.com and let us know that you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, that, that would be a good thing. And uh, let's see. I'm going to do one. Wonderful staff will take care of you. I want to just sign it in gold right here, I think. I think I might even put a little gold on her backpack. Ooh, that's pretty, isn't it? It's kind of, it has sort of a little oriental feel, doesn't it? Well, it's Miss Peabody. Miss Peabody is one of the winners. Okay. So here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna tip it. I think this way and sign it like on an angle, like that. Oh, like oh, like on one of the ribs. That's kind of cool. That's what I would do. I would hide my signature in the paintings. Yeah. So anyway, that's a th 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 simple way to paint a gown. Now remember, the traceable for this is acrylic painting with gingercook.com, and it's for orange members and above. And here's the thing, you guys, when you're an orange member. It's not five dollars for traceable. It's five dollars a month, four ninety five a month. But that gives you access to everything we've done for the last two years. And you know, you could come and for a month and things. go. Just come for a month and then check out and then go or not. It, it, there's just you. You control how often you're. If you leave it as a current membership and appreciation for what we do, uh, we appreciate that very much because it, all of that helps and. Um, it, may, it means the world to us that um, that you watch us and that you like what we do. So my question for you tonight is, is, is. Oh, we have a question of the night. Uh, like when you go answer? on vacation, do you take photos? Do you take photos of your vacation? Do you want to paint them? And will you now think about uh, taking photos from people from behind after because it's tonight? That's what I want to know. That's and, what you want to know? Yeah. Out of everything in the world, that's what you want to know. Well, no. Well. Today, at this moment, it is. Yeah. That's what I want to know now. So we're going to wish Sean another happy birthday. Thanks oh, for all thank the birthday wishes. Thank you, everyone, wishes. for the well wishes and the happy birthdays. Uh, you'll be having to know I'm 33 now. Doing quite well. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I'm just, uh, I guess I could I could have put a little more detail. But what, this is what you get in th an hour. Let's we'll spend a little more time. You might get something else too. But that's that's what we got. And listen, we'll see you next week. Be sure to be be sure to show your artwork. I'm dying to see what you're painting on acrylic. Um, uh, Ginger's acrylic. Uh, what is the name of Facebook Club, John? Well, actually, what it's called because I looked it up today because I had to give the link to somebody. It's just Ginger Cook. Acrylic painting club. No, it's not that. No, it's just no. It's not. What is it? It is, the official is Ginger Cook Club. 
The official name that we put on is the Ginger Cook Acrylic Painting Club. Okay, Ginger Cook Acrylic Painting Club. And like some of you, uh, you know, we want to see. We love, we love to see what you're posting. Thanks everybody who showed us your studio. If you want to see what other pa people are painting, we wanted to show you tonight, but we didn't get around to it. But we probably 100 people posted pictures of their studio, just what they were doing. Not the best cleaned up studio ever, but just no. We said st do it right now. Yeah, just for, that's why I turned off the comments. I wanted you to see what people have. You know, if they just went upstairs and took a quick picture, what have they got? And I think you're going to find that most people are painting in a very small, comfortable space, not not big, nothing big and grand, and turning out pretty awesome work. And um, I, I thought everybody would enjoy that. So thanks, thanks for playing, you guys. That was fun. I would look for questions in the, you know, look for our questions and be sure to read the Gazette. Yeah, don't forget that Gazette. I had a whole on thing it. on how to do fine lines in the Gazette at the very bottom. Scroll all the way down, and there's yeah, a whole thing. Yeah, make you read the thing. Yeah, if you're if you're not reading the thing, right? The thing. John, and just for fun, for people who hung in there longer, do one more drawing for that. Oh, just for fun? Just for fun. Let's do one more for you those who hung in to the crazy. very end. Do one more drawing for that downloadable lesson. All right. I'm doing it now. He's going to do it because you guys I kind of ramble on at the end, and most people have tuned out. But those of you who hung in there with us. Well, how do I know if they're still here? Well, they won't write us then. If they oh, don't, that's if, true. If they're going to miss it. If you hung in there with it, you have a chance. You know, another chance. So, All right. Let's see. And <laughs> the third winner. Uh, downloadable. Is drum roll, please. Is and C I C C A R E L L I P I C C A R E L L I Picarly Chicar. Okay. And, and congratulations, C. and C, awesome. <laughs> if it's you, you've got a downloadable lesson. Thanks very much, and we love you guys. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to tune in. and, uh, and Subscribe listen. if you haven't, please. Thank see you. you. Thank Cost you. you nothing. We'll see you soon. Bye. See you soon. You're not going to see them. You know, everybody says, hey, I'll see you next week. We don't see anybody. We don't. We need something different. We don't see anything. No, we see nothing. Well, if you come we to the retreat next really summer there. in August with Cinnamon up in the Poconos, I'll see you. There's a there few spots left. We're still having that. Yep. In between cruises. All right, babe. Bye. Bye. Ginger Cook, the queen of color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light, and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes. The queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics.